Hello, my name is Brian and I'll be walking you through how to use the flatbed Epson scanners. A quick note, the Epson scanning software and the scanning process itself are exactly the same for both Macs and PCs. The only difference will be how you open the program. So with that note, let's get started. If you're using a Mac, you want to go you want to click on the magnifying glass icon in the top right or hit command plus space. Either way, type Epson scan in the search field that pops up. Click the Epson scan to open the software. For those of you using PCs, what you want to do is go to the bottom left area of the screen and click on the Windows logo. In the search field directly above the icon, type in Epson Scan and click on the first select selection that should pop up. So now that we have the program open, you'll notice that the Epson Scan interface has popped up, but with limited scanning options. Click on the drop down box that's labeled Mode and select Professional Mode. The interface will change, but that's exactly what we want. Now, this is where things can get a little confusing. You might be asking what options you should change or select to get the best scan possible. Well, don't worry. We'll go, everything step by, we'll go over everything step by step. First things first, you'll want to change the type of document being scanned. As you can see here, there's a setting labeled Document Type. If you're scanning an image or a document, you'll want to leave the document type as reflective. If, however, you're scanning film, that you'll want to change the document type to either of the two other document types. The document source will remain the same because there's only one option. So I guess we kind of have to leave it as a document table. Easy enough. Now the auto exposure type automatically defaults to a photo. So if you're scanning a document, you'll want to change it to document. Otherwise, we'll just leave it as it is. Now the next section we're going to look at is the section labeled destination. This section will be important if you want to enhance the quality of your scan. The first option is the section in this section is image type. Here you can change the color setting to fit your image's needs. However, I would recommend that you leave it as a 24-bit color. The next option you'll see is the Resolution tab. We recommend that you scan images, images in as 300 dpi, which is the standard resolution that the scanner will scan in. But if you want a slightly better quality image, feel free to up the dpi. Also, if you want a slightly lower quality image, say to lower the file size of the image, you're welcome to lower the resolution of the image. As a side note, we recommend that you don't go over 600 dpi. Things tend to just get messy at resolution, resolutions higher than 600 dpi, so yeah, I would recommend that you just don't do it. So now that we've got the image type and resolution done, I would recommend leaving the document size and target size as they are. The rest of the settings in the menu we'll talk about later. They are merely here to modify slightly the image that you scan in, so if you scan now without selecting any of the settings, your image will still come out fine. Now that we're all set, go ahead and hit the preview button. What the preview button does is create a low quality scan of your document on your desktop so that you can select the part of the image that you want to be scanned in by the scanner. So as you see, the software made a quick scan of my document. What you want to do is first click on the preview window and then select the bottom left button here. What that does is create a bounding box around your image. Whatever is inside the bounding box will be scanned, so you'll, will be scanned in, so you'll want to resize the box so that it encompasses what you want scanned in. Of course, if you made a mistake and you want to reset the bounding box, click the button right here in the top left corner and then click the bottom left button again. This will allow you to start with a new bounding box. Now that we've got the bounding box all set up, you want to go back to the main scanning window over here, click once on the window, and then click scan. You'll notice that a new window will pop up that will allow us to adjust the save options. Yeah. In this window, you'll see a location at the top labeled location. Location refers to where you want your scanned image to be saved to. We recommend that you click on the bottom bubble labeled other and choose your save location as the desktop. After you do that, you'll see in the next section labeled file name, the box labeled prefix, and the box labeled start number. This will just save your file name as a prefix underscore the number of your scan. Now this is the most important part of this window. In the next section you labeled image format, you can choose how you want your image to be scanned in. Here you can save it as a .jpeg, a .pdf, or a .tiff file. If you're scanning an image, I would recommend saving it as a .jpeg, while if you're scanning it in a document, I would recommend you save it as a .pdf file. If you're planning on saving your image as a .pdf, I'm going to show you an extra little feature that the Epson Scan software has in a moment. Just hold tight. So after you have all your save settings set to your needs, go ahead and hit OK. And voila! Your image is scanning in. If you chose to save your image to your desktop, the file should pop up on your desktop as soon as this progress bar finishes. And there you go. Your scan is right there on the desktop. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the preview window to clear up some space on, the, on my desktop, but you don't have to. If you do, just go ahead and click OK. Sometimes it's convenient to close the preview window after your scan is done if you're doing multiple scans. That way, you won't confuse yourself with what you have scanned and what you haven't scanned. Now, if you're hoping to scan a PDF file, the Epson Scan software has a nice feature to create multi-page PDF files so you don't have to scan all your images in and then merge them into a single file. Well, 
Since that statement probably confused you, I'll show you what I mean. If you go ahead and hit preview scan, the preview window will pop up. Now I'm going to go ahead and modify my bounding box. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit scan and change my file type to a .pdf file. Now as the progress bar disappears, you'll see a new window pop up that will tell you that your scan is done and will ask you whether or not you want to add pages to your PDF file or not. If you want to add another page, go ahead and hit add page. However, you will see that the file will not pop, on your pop up on your desktop. This is because it's waiting for you to add another page to your PDF. Just go ahead and scan your index image in and then select save file when you're done adding pages to your PDF. And ta-da! It's on your desktop. So now you're all done and your image is all scanned. I just want to go over the different scanning adjustments you can make to your image. The first one here is Unsharp Mask. Unsharp Mask essentially allows you to sharpen an image. You can slightly change the amount of sharpening by clicking on the arrow right next to the Unsharp Mask. Descreening is, de screening is extremely helpful if you're scanning a newspaper or magazine image. Because newspaper and magazine images are created using a series of overlapping dots, simply scanning a newspaper or magazine image can often lead to a distortion of the images, such as a wavy appearance. Using this descreening button can help, you, can help preserve the quality of these images. You can change the descreening settings in order to match your newspaper or magazine image, as you can see in the screen ruling drop-down box. The next adjustment is color restoration. If you're scanning an old image, this adjustment is extremely helpful in restoring the image colors, colors to close to their original appearance. Backlight correction is good if the image that you're scanning has a lot of shadowing because of background light in the original image. Backlight correction can help eliminate some of the shadowing. And of course, you can change the amount of backlight correction that you want. Dust removal helps clean the image of dust that could have been trapped on the image. This is really only helpful if you're scanning slides or film, but it can, he but it can help your image look a little sharper. And finally, digital ice technology does mostly the same as dust removal, except that it can also help reduce the appearance of scratches on the image. Again, this is more helpful if you're scanning slides or film, but it can, it can help make your image look a little sharper. So now that you know how to do everything in the Epson Scan software, have fun scanning your image. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and if you need any help, feel free to ask for help over at the consultant's desk. Have a good day.